Well, I guess these guys think that they're funny too with these uh, post try celebrations. What do you think of this rubbish? Hey, you got the moves, go for it. If you don't, don't do it. <laughs> Dowdy? Well, I certainly wouldn't have the moves. <laughs> Carry on. Oh, look, hey, I, I got no time for it. I think it's individualism in a, within a sports team. I think, you know, at the end of the day, you, I'd, I'd be looking to turn around and thank the guy that made me the pass or, or go to your prop forward and say, hey, thanks for giving me a decent right shoulder so I created the space for me. You know, it's not all about me. And, uh, but Dan Cipriani's a special character. <laughs> Part of the entertainment package. Oh, but the crowd's not going to imitate him. <laughs> You'd have to say it is part of the entertainment package, but at the same time, they've been practising that when they yeah, probably should right. have. They probably should have been practising exactly. other stuff that would have been more used to them. Well, and that guy Supriani has results. had a crook hamstring. Yeah. So then he goes through that routine straight away yeah. afterwards. Yeah. And then it can lead to a bit of trouble. You take this one here, which, uh, you know, led to Jimmy and uh, Corey having words after the game. Daddy? Yeah, well, I'm not too impressed uh, if I was laying down there just about where he's standing and what you're looking at. So, uh, yeah. yeah, you've got every reason to be uh, a little bit upset. No place for it, is there? Well, not that incident, definitely not. Right. Yeah. OK, well, they're going to keep their eye on it. Here they are at the weekend. They're obviously spending a bit of time. So I wonder how it lets this sort of stuff happen, Andy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's as Daddy said, uh, thank the guy that... Um, gave you the pass rather than someone else that might have very little influence on it. There must be another one coming up here. Well, mind you, this is a forward, isn't it? Running this far. Lavia. Lavave, sorry. Yeah. Great try. Oh, Wonderful great try. try, try. It's one of the tries of the season. Didn't you just get on for uh, Julian Sevilla? Do you remember when Not you a bad used to replacement score, that one, eh? when you, people used to score a try and they'd walk all the way back with their the head, head down, down and uh, yeah. just come through? Well, Next. Probably going Next. A bit, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> OK, the Otago situation. Did we get all the questions we were asked answered and are the wider ramifications? Andy? Well, I think that there's no question that the model's wrong. Um, the product is dicey. We've talked about that. But the model's wrong because there'll be other provinces that'll be saying right now, we could have done with a little bit of a help out from the New Zealand Union. Um, they clearly haven't got the money. Um, they lost 10 million last year. And the, the NZRU. Before, yeah. NZRU. Um, and they could well be hit with um, the exchange rate being so high at the moment that they could cop it again. Um, so I think there's a lot of provinces that'll be very upset that Otago got bailed out by the New Zealand Union. So that clearly says that the model is wrong um, and they have to do something about fixing that and pretty quick. Otherwise, there'll be other, a lot of other provinces that'll be finding the same problem. You coach North Harbour. I live there. I know how hard up that place has been for a long time too. Yeah, well, it says everything when they got four accountants sitting on the board because uh, they, they, you have to pay attention to the numbers and that's, that's what the one thing they have been doing reasonably well. But there's other unions out there that, uh, that haven't been doing that. This country is heading for a car crash. Otago is just the head of the pimple and they've been looked after. And like Andy said, what happens when the other unions put their hand out now that we've already had to bail them out? Because 19 professional rugby teams, including the All Blacks on top of that, you cannot sustain it in a country of four and a half million people. Now, the NZRU have been trying and trying to actually tell everyone that, but no one's been listening. And it takes an incident like this to actually people realise, what's, what's wrong with a game when a, when a union goes under? Well, watch this space, because uh, there's, there's a lot more unions in trouble. Andrew, the clubs in the UK that you played for, they had more independence from a central body. One of the issues here is that the NZRU holds control of lots of things like broadcasting rights, yeah. sponsorship rights. It's pretty hard for provinces to raise money. Oh, definitely. What about your clubs in the UK? They were able to, weren't they? Well, they're, like you said, they're individually owned by an, a wealthy owner, uh, but has a heart for, for your club. For example, at uh, Northampton was Keith Barwell, passionate, gone through Northampton Saints his, since he was a young boy. Uh, obviously come across a lot of money selling a newspaper agency in, in England and wanted to put his money back into it. Obviously the first uh, year when rugby returned professional, um, you know, clubs were buying huge uh, players and, and putting a lot of money into it and getting nothing. And, and, and the result, a lot of clubs folded. Uh, they put an agreement, uh, a 10 year agreement. In 10 years, they'll have 17,000 plus in, uh, stadiums. 
And uh, so the 10-year agreement, I think it's come up now, and you look at all the clubs in the UK, uh, they're, they're breaking even at the end of the year. Some clubs, Northampton Saints, Leicester Tigers, making profits. Um, so they had a 10-year plan to, to do that. And 60 million people, the, though, as well. The turnstiles, and definitely. They, they've yeah. got more people coming through yeah. the turnstiles, so the game is a lot more... Uh, um, it's a lot more. It's a lot more affluent. There's a lot more money into the into the yeah. game. Here, we haven't got enough spectators, and they're also going to. And the and the game in the UK is not that terribly good, but they're still going along and watching. I think the game here is probably better, but they're not following it. Yeah. So, it has to be some adjustment adjustments. So I still think what they're doing in terms of um, looking at overseas investment is, is a positive thing. I think they need to look at that. I'd have to disagree and say it's a bit of window dressing. You know, they put out for individual ownership, but it's not no, really no, the ownership. It, the individual owners were going to be the uh, They franchise. didn't own anything. Yeah, yeah, they didn't yeah, own anything. Yeah. So oh, it was, okay. it was, uh, it it was, was a bit not, of win window dressing. All right, guys, appreciate it immensely. And uh, I would imagine that what we would be hoping for, Dowdy, would be a Blues victory at the weekend. Well, there's any team they're coming up against, the Rebels, you know, they're a flaky side. You know, you hold out for 40 minutes, they'll capitulate after that, and then you put them to the sword. So yeah. bring it on. Thanks so much for coming Thank in. Thank you, Mary.